What's up guys, Rogue9 here and this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the one-stop shop for all of your website creating needs, but more about them later. If you follow Rainbow Six Siege discussions on Twitter, Reddit or other forums, you will have seen a lot of recent debate around Zofia and her unique withstand ability which allows her to self-revive, something that no other operator in the game can do. Valid questions are being raised about whether or not an already complex game like Rainbow Six Siege should have hidden abilities and passives like this and in this video I want to cover the top 10 hidden features and abilities in the game. As always, a pinned comment below includes timestamps to all of the different topics and with that, let's go. Since I've already mentioned Zofia, we shall start out with her because she is a source of a lot of confusion. As already mentioned, this hardy Polish lady is the only operator on Team Rainbow who, through the sheer force of her iron will, can drag herself up after having been riddled with bullets. While other characters in the down but not out state can merely drag themselves around the floor or apply pressure to their wounds with the use button, Zofia can use that same key to simply stand back up and continue the fight with 5% health restored. In addition to this, Zofia automatically has a double length bleed out timer. By default, she can stay in the DBNO state for 1 minute instead of 30 seconds without having to apply pressure to her injuries. Since the stun grenades fired by her double barreled grenade launcher cause the same effect as Ella's Gajmot mines, she also has a partial immunity to the concussive effects of both of her and her sister's gadgets and will recover twice as fast compared to other operators. In the real world of course, troops who are repeatedly exposed to concussive blasts such as breaching charges or even just firing shoulder launched weapons can and will accumulate traumatic brain injuries that will over time make them highly susceptible to any kind of knock to the head. But Zofia is tough and the repeated severe blast to the head she receives by being exposed to her own stun grenades has made her even tougher. Yoshifomoga! And finally, something that experienced players will most likely know, but a surprising number of players still find very confusing, is her grenade launcher. It comes with 4 shots, 2 explosive impact grenades and 2 concussion grenades, and it takes many new players a while to realize that you can actually switch between the two instead of having to fire off the 2 impacts first before you can get to the 2 stun grenades. Use the fire rate selector button when the launcher is equipped to switch between the 2 types of grenades. Red light means explosive grenades, yellow means stun grenades. And that's Sophia done, and since we've already briefly mentioned the other boss act sister Ella, let's go over to her next. Just like Sophia, Ella's brain has also been significantly mushed up over time due to repeated exposure to their concussive gadgets, and she now also has a magical partial immunity that allows her to recover twice as fast as any other operators when she gets hit by her sister's stun grenades or if she's too close to her own as they get triggered. And besides this, she also has a hidden down but not out ability that is so obscure and seldomly used that most players forget it even exists. When Ella is in the DBNO state, she has the ability to drop a timed concussion mine that will stun anyone in a 6 meter radius around her, whether they are friendly or enemy units. This ability is so obscure and situational that I myself have never been able to use it to successfully hamper the advance of the attacking team and I think the same goes for most other players. But hey, it's in the game so there you go. Rook is another one of those operators with a gadget that you think is relatively straightforward but that actually turns out to include some hidden complexity. First off, his armor plates reduce incoming damage by 20% which stacks with any other damage modifiers such as the target's baseline armor rating, limb strikes or strikes after penetrating soft cover. In addition to this, his plates will also guarantee a down but not out no matter how much damage is sustained with the last hit the defender takes, as long as that hits not a headshot of course. After going down though, the operator will have the usual 20 HP reserve health pool and will usually be taken out with a single hit. And finally, equipping Rook's armor plates will also magically affect the cardiovascular system of the wearer and thereby double the bleed out time from 30 seconds to 60 seconds while crawling or even up to a maximum of 2 minutes when applying pressure to the wound. 
All of these effects also apply to any attacker that might get their hands on a leftover plate, and if Sophia manages to snag one, her bleed out time is also doubled and she will get the full two minutes without having to apply any pressure. Nook is a relatively new operator, so you would think that all of the little quirks of her ability are still fresh in everyone's mind. But of course, this is Rainbow Six Siege we're talking about, and so it's most likely that some of these features are not known to most players. Simple stuff first. Her ability, of course, is to be hidden from any observational tools that the defenders are using and to be quieter than usual, basically a combo of Vigil and Cavera. But as you might know, unlike her counterpart Vigil, Nook has a few weaknesses to her cloaking ability. Under certain circumstances, Nook will be visible to the defenders as a sort of glitch effect on screen. These situations include sprinting, moving through barbed wire, taking damage, for instance from goo mines, electrified items, or being shot at, and performing actions such as planting the diffuser, droning, or shooting her weapons. Other actions such as reloading or switching weapons will not cause the glitch effect that makes her visible to observation tools. Because why keep things consistent when you can also include confusing exceptions? When it comes to the noise she makes while moving, the silent step function of her cloaking device also only works while moving slowly, so sprinting basically cancels out these advantages too. And so far so good, that might still make sense to most players. But here's a couple of interesting features that you might not know about. Did you know that Nurk is immune to being revealed by Alibi's prismas while her ability is active? You can walk through or even shoot through the holograms without having the pings activated on her location. On the other hand, activating the cloak after getting pinged though will not cancel out the pings that are already running on her. But wait, there's more. When observed through almost all camera devices, Nook is 100% invisible, but if a defender is using one of Echo's cloaked drones or an attacker drone that has been hacked by Mozzie, then those specific observation tools will experience the same static snow effect that attackers get when looking for a cloaked vigil because of course the mantra of Rainbow Six Siege is why keep things simple and consistent when you can also make them complicated and confusing. As you may know, I recently started working on creating a Rogue Nine website that will be an additional channel through which I will be able to share Rainbow Six Siege news and updates much quicker and more flexibly than through YouTube videos alone. I should have the site up and running soon since creating the initial draft for the website has been a complete breeze thanks to the help of Squarespace. They delivered everything I needed in one place, starting with picking and registering my website domain from the over 200 available top level domains domains that Squarespace has on offer. Using one of their award-winning templates made it really easy to get started since the structure of a full website is already there and I just needed to adapt the individual pages for the content that I will be looking to share with you. Having integrated access to search engine optimization and website analytics features will make it really easy for me to ensure that my content can be found and that people will find it interesting and relevant in future. So if you've ever thought about creating your own website, head over to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And when you're ready to get your website off the ground, go to squarespace.com slash rogue nine, link in the description, to get a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. This next segment will cover a bunch of little tricks and bits of info that are really useful but not everyone may know. Those of you who have been playing Siege for a while may remember that the regular breaching charges carried by many of the attackers used to have a traffic light system on them. If you tried to place the charge on a non-breachable surface, you would get a red light. A surface that is soft but not fully breachable, such as floors and some walls, would give you a yellow light, and if the surface was fully breachable, you would get a green light. But it turned out that this system was confusing newer players, and so it has now been simplified to green and red only. Green means you can place the charge, red means you cannot. 
soft walls in Rainbow Six can only be fully opened with a shotgun or explosive, and of course you would assume that unreinforced hatches are the same, right? Well, wrong, because as long as you have enough bullets with you, any gun can do enough damage to hatches to open them up fully, and if you have enough time to spare, you can even melee them open. If you get a teammate or two to help you out, a hatch can actually be shot open pretty quickly, although I wouldn't really advise you to go with meleeing. That will probably take too long to ever be practical. And while we're discussing hatches, it's also worth mentioning that Thermite can use his exothermic charges on a reinforced and electrified hatch by placing the charge on the floor or a wall close to that hatch. The charge will not be destroyed by the electricity, but the blast will still be large enough to open up the reinforced hatch. In Rainbow Six Siege, single barricades for doorways and windows can be vaulted through after only a single melee strike if you hit the correct spot. Each barricade model is made up of segments that can be hit out or shot out with two bullets, and what you are essentially trying to achieve is to take out six of these segments in one hit. For both windows and doors, this can be done by striking the plank of wood just below the vertical center of the yellow X, about halfway between the middle of the barricade and either the left or right hand side. This will allow you to vault through the barricade immediately instead of having to put in an additional strike. Maverick might not be the best operator for opening up holes that are large enough to actually get through, but if you have a teammate with you who can breach soft surfaces, you can use the following trick to open up an entire wall. Just cut two horizontal lines across the entire width of the wall segment, and once complete, the entire reinforcement panel will fall away, leaving the soft surface exposed to being shot or blown open. And now, for the grand finale of confusing operators, we have the queen of hidden features herself, Finker. Out of the three pages of notes and bullet points I made while conducting my research for this video, the entire last page is pretty much just dedicated to Finker, because her entire ability is basically just a collection of hidden features. The in-game description tells us that her Adrenal Surge involves nanobots that give her team a brief gain in HP and revive allies in a DBNO state. But as you might well know, this description might be just a little bit of an understatement in terms of what this global ability will actually do, so here is the full list of benefits and drawbacks that the entire attacking team will get once Finker pushes her little button. Everyone gets a temporary health gain of 20 HP that can be used up when taking damage or that will disappear at the end of the effect if not used up. The time to aim down sights is reduced by 25%. Recoil when firing is massively reduced to almost zero and this effect is so strong that experienced players that are used to controlling the recoil manually will frequently overcompensate and end up dragging their aim down too low. Reload times for all weapons, including firearms and gadgets such as grenade launchers, is reduced by around 15%. Movement speed through barbed wire is increased by around 40%. The effects of flash grenades, Ying Candela's or Blitz's shield flash are reduced by around 50%. The effects of the Polish concussion grenades from Ella or Zofia are massively reduced by around 70% and this will stack with Zofia's innate ability to resist these concussions, making her almost completely immune. Tinnitus from explosions or stuns is instantly removed. And as if all of those effects weren't enough, yes, there is still the ability to revive downed players. In theory, you could literally revive all four of your teammates scattered across the entire map and all it would take is the press of a button from perfect safety. 
How likely would this scenario be? Yeah, very unlikely, but even the possibility of reviving a single downed teammate remotely is totally bonkers. And just to make things that little bit more complex, there are of course a couple of caveats to this. Finca cannot use her ability to revive herself when she has been downed, and teammates caught in one of Frost's welcome mats can also not be revived. And as you can see, the gadget is already quite a bit more complex than the game description would have us believe. But wait! There's more! The effect will also have interactions with various defender abilities. Stepping in one of Legion's goo mines will immediately halt the effect of the nanobots, and activating the bots while the poison effect of the mine is still active will basically cancel the finger boost instantly. It will be as if it never really activated for that specific teammate. Echo's drones are similar but different in their interaction with Finca, because while a sonic blast from a drone will immediately cancel the boost, just like Goom Mines, Finca's boost can also cancel the concussion effects of a drone if activated afterwards. So the boost effect is vulnerable to a couple of specific defenders who can essentially switch it off. But wait! There is still more! There are actually a couple of defenders against whom the boost will have downsides for the attacking team. Pulse's cardiac sensor can normally detect players up to 9 meters away, but when the adrenal boost is active, that range is increased to 14 meters for Pulse, allowing him to scan and call out attackers that are much further away. Even worse than this is Smoke with his poisoned gas canisters. The damage of the gas cloud is increased by 50% for each individual tick and any attacker that gets caught in the smoke while the adrenal boost is active is going to have a pretty rough time indeed. But wait! Yeah, no, I'm joking. There, there isn't anything else that Finca does, and I think I'm pretty safe in saying that this list of effects and interactions is more than enough. In fact, if all of these effects for Finca alone were spread out over four attacking operators for an entire year, it would still be more than enough. Hidden abilities, passive effects and secret interactions sound fun at first, but with a game as complex as Siege already is, you're just further muddying the water with each operator that brings this kind of stuff to the table. The fact is that with Siege, things have gone so far now that even experienced players with thousands of hours in the game will maybe struggle to have all of these hidden features in mind at all times, especially when trying to focus on the current rounds they are playing. Hopefully this list of hidden features will help you understand the game a bit better going forward, and if you've learned something today, feel free to leave the video a like. And with that, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.